Joining us today is Bob Yejodaime. Hopefully I pronounce it right. Um, he's the Vice President of INNX. Welcome to the STU Summit in Korea. Thanks for having me. How was your flight? Uh, it was good. It was, was uh, that a long flight? Uh, I think it was like a 48 hour uh, trip, basically. 48 to, to, hours? To get here, oh my yes. Yeah, I had a couple of stop <laughs> stopovers. But uh, you know, it's good to be here. Um, I was here like two months ago for oh, the first okay. time. And I just loved it. And, uh, and uh, I, I wasn't actually expecting to be back this early, yeah. uh, this soon. But uh, as soon as the opportunity came up, I was like, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm heading back to Korea. So. Cool. So um, to start, could you please um, briefly introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. Uh, my name is Bob Ejodami. Uh, I'm the VP of Capital Market mm -hmm. at INX. Uh, I'm a uh, traditional finance guy by, by my background. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I've been in uh, financial markets since um, almost 20 years now. Uh, and I've worked at you know, large broker dealers, uh, inter-dealer brokers, uh, foreign exchange, equities, uh, fixed income. Uh, I've you know, occupied different roles mm -hmm. as a product owner. I've you know, headed operations. So I kind of, you know, I've sat at that interface between the business and yeah. the technology and the customer. Um, so I, I kind of have a good, you know, well-rounded uh, experience uh, of, of what it means to provide like regulated financial services to you know, pre predominantly institutional clients yeah. uh, historically, uh, but now at INX, um, we we have quite a retail oriented offering, mm -hmm. and so uh, you know it's a it's a slight change there. But you know at the at the heart of it, it's about keeping the uh, the same kind of you know regulatory protections, yeah. whether it's institutions or, or those guys. So you know my role at INX is very much to do with mm -hmm. uh, kind of building this business, okay. building out the space, um, you know looking for new clients, new collaborations and partnerships. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, so it's been an interesting journey, let's yeah, just say. Yeah, it sounds very professional. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to learn more about INX as well. Um, can you provide an overview of your company? Sure. So INX is, uh, uh, we're like a leading player in the security token yeah. offering space uh, for a bunch of reasons. First mm -hmm. of all, because we are one of the early, uh, uh, early companies in this space. Mm -hmm. So we, we are, we were for, uh, the company was formed as far back as 2017. Oh. And if you remember back then, we had the ICO bubble, yeah. right? So, you know, billions of dollars globally just kind of like pff, mm. went up in smoke in all these, uh, these, uh, these, you know, white paper, you know, structured, you know, companies. And so our founder, uh, Shai Datika, he, he, he thought you should be able to allow companies raise capital from retail uh, but do it in the regulated way, like, you know, yeah. have, have investors enjoy the same investor mm -hmm. protections that they normally would if they were purchasing stocks or, or, or bonds or things like mm -hmm. that. So the, the company spent the first two and a half years or so uh, just working with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to um, get approval for an IPO. Yeah. And what was special about this IPO was that it was going to be on chain. It was going to be the first ever tokenized uh, uh, initial public offering mm -hmm. in U.S. history. And after two and a half years of back and forth where we worked closely with the SEC and really helped them understand the space, mm -hmm. uh, we launched that IPO. And uh, so in 2020, it went live. You know, we think back, this was like the height of the bull, mm. uh, the bull market, you know, so like crypto was on, on fire yeah. at the time. And um, you know we did very well. We raised 80, 84 million dollars wow. from uh, you know seven thousand plus investors in like 60, 60 plus countries. All from crypto industry? Or? No, it was a good mix oh, of okay. uh, it was a good mix of digital crypto mm. natives and also kind of you know newbies to the space. People who were looking for investment opportunities in in private companies, yeah. um, but as part as this being a tokenized IPO. Mm -hmm. You could say, you know, we kind of converted those guys to oh. to become like digital native yeah. because, you know, in the process of investing, you set up a wallet mm. and you kind of have to have some uh, some blockchain basics. So, uh, you know, so we successfully raised the capital and then we acquired licenses. Yeah. We acquired a broker dealer, mm -hmm. uh, an ATS, which is an exchange, uh, which is a platform for trading security mm -hmm. tokens, uh, transfer agent license. We worked with, you know, d all the states in the United States cool. to uh, acquire a money transmitter mm -hmm. license. So we, we kind of went into this regulatory uh, um, 
uh, this process of, of filling, mm. up, filling up our, our war chest, if you want to call it that, our regulatory, yeah. our licenses war chest. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and then we launched INX1, which is our flagship uh, platform mm -hmm. um, where you can, as an investor or as a trader, you can access primary offerings, so companies mm. that are raising capital. So you basically can invest in early stage companies. So it's an exchange platform? It, it, yeah, so there's a crypto exchange mm. as part of that and there's a security tokens platform. Cool. Um, and we've basically done a good job of kind of blending this, all these solutions yeah. into this one mm. you know, user interface, this one platform. So, you know, we, we've, uh, you know we've, we've been in the space for six years. Mm -hmm. The last three years, we've been very much actively, you know, building the, cap the capabilities. I think we've been setting an example for the industry on how, um, you know, how you should basically run such, an ex such a platform. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you know, it's like the, 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 you know, we have so much opportunity in this space. Like, you know, That's we're really true. excited yeah. to, to be in this position. Mm. Thank you for that insightful response. Um, then do you guys also launched your platform in Korea as well? Or? No, so we, so first of all, the INX uh, platform is accessible to oh, investors in, sev in 70 plus countries, oh, okay. right? We, we maintain what we call a green list. Okay. Uh, and that green list uh, is made up of anything from uh, our partner banks, mm -hmm. ability to support payments in oh, and out okay. of that country, yeah. to our own determination on what the digital asset uh, uh, um, uh, uh, regulations look like mm -hmm. in those countries. The most important thing to state is this is a reverse solicitation. This means you know we are not in those countries advertising. Mm -hmm. We're not offering uh, uh, investment opportunities in like local currencies, for example. Right? We don't have yeah. the licenses to operate mm -hmm. in that way. But reverse solicitation means people in those countries can find our platform and they could sign up to the platform. Cool. Do you think that Korea is one of the like closed door country in crypto or SEO market industry? What do you reckon? Not at all. Not at uh, all. Okay. You know, like when you say closed door, I mean, we, like f from my days in foreign exchange, you know, the Korean one trades as an NDF. It's, uh, you know, you, you could say there's some closed offness around, mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. Korea in foreign exchange markets. Yeah. I don't think that's the same in digital oh, markets. Okay. Uh, you know, Korea is uh, traditionally has been an early adopter in 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 you know high tech uh, s spaces. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, mm. seeing a chart once that showed how Koreans had high speed internet, yeah. like for a decade while mm. the rest of the world sure. was still on like you know yeah. dial up and, and <laughs> things like that. So I think Korea is uh, Koreans are very early adopters in sort of the new exciting yeah. uh, things. I think it was also like the first ever uh, in game purchase was you know on, mm -hmm. a, on a computer game was done you know by by a korean company so we the the, the vibe we're getting is that mm. korea is just really excited about generally about blockchain obviously mm. but also about the security token space yeah so. that's true but when we think of the ico part actually korean government banned all the ico um, exchanges back in 2017 i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that was actually like quite a bad news for us yeah. Well, you say bad news, but listen, it wasn't bad news because mm -hmm. think about how, how many billions kind of just disappeared, right? You know, the ICOs were an okay. unregulated um, thing and they were, they, were, they were bad for business ultimately. And, mm -hmm. and I think the right approach was to protect the, the, the consumer, right? Yeah. Protect the, uh, the, the, the public. And, and, and what you'll find is in a year from now, when the first security token offerings are, are live in, in, mm -hmm. in Korea, um, you know, people will look back and say, wow, like this is how to invest in, you know, and, and not just in some random company that's offshore yeah. that we don't even know who the, who the founding team is, you know, because they call themselves a DAO, yeah. you know, and, and they, they operate on a first name mm. basis, you know, using avatars on their <laughs> website, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, then when we think of the real estate and arts parts, they're the traditional illiquid assets, mm -hmm. then how can tokenization transform these markets? So they are illiquid. Mm -hmm. you're, you're absolutely right. Um, kind of niche as well. So, you know, if you think about a huge, you know, hotel resort mm -hmm. or, uh, or a golf resort yeah. um, and, you know, you have an owner of this asset, mm. Um, and maybe they're not looking to sell the asset. Maybe they're okay. looking to raise capital on the back of such an asset and deploy that capital into you know, other business mm -hmm. lines or, or improve the, the actual business. Yeah. Um, 
and today they could walk into a bank and say, hey, you know, I want to take a loan using my resort as collateral. Uh, and then they go through that whole traditional banking process. And then what's the interest rate? You know, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and what's the what's the cost of doing that business? Mm. And now look at security token offerings where they could say, right, we're putting up this resort. We're raising, let's say, five million dollars uh, on the back of this resort. And the investors are going to receive a life li lifetime in, you know, profit sharing, mm. for example, uh, of the resort. And we're going to use that capital to build a real estate business, sure. you know, using the exi existing yeah. model, for example. Mm. And now you have investors who are able to, to say, you know, I own, you know, a thousand dollars worth of a golf resort, mm. you know, and I earn a yield or, or, or some dividend kind of payments on an annual basis. Uh, and that's pretty exciting. Right. Mm. So this is fractionalization of an illiquid asset. And, uh, and, and, and the same applies to art. Right. Think about an art collection you know, locked away in yeah. a safe, like, you know, in a vault somewhere, you know, mm. no one can see this art mm. really, or, or, you know, the art might actually be on display and it be moved around. Um, but again, you know, you don't want to sell the whole piece. Um, you want to retain the ownership and the, 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 you know, the decision making around where the art mm. goes and you don't want it to disappear in a, in some billionaires, you yeah. know, uh, some uh, mansion, so you could do a similar, you know, offering and 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 allow you know thousands mm -hmm. of retail investors, people who love art, people who appreciate mm -hmm. the, the the art business, um, to uh, to own a little portion of this art. Mm, okay. You know, so that's super exciting. Yeah, but some people still get confused for um, between NFT and mm -hmm. STO arts. What mm -hmm. do you think the main key future difference? Well, you know, NFTs are, you know, digital art mm. can be represented through or is represented through NFTs uh, on chain. You know, and that's a whole, let's respect the fact that art evolves and yeah. art exists in different ways. Um, and, you know, well done to the industry for creating a new, yeah. a new art form, right? Um, but when you, when you look at the investment mm. vehicle, the investment mechanism, for uh, the people who own these NFTs and the way the NFTs are owned and the way the, they, they, they move, uh, the way the ownership gets transferred, mm. in some cases you could argue that, you know, it doesn't really follow tried and tested, you know, uh, uh, ways where there are disclosures yeah. and attestations and there are, you know, proper investor protections. Mm. Um, so the, the point is, there's regulations exist to create a safe, and tried and tested way for assets to change ownership mm. and so applying that in the digital space using you know a security token offering mechanism yeah i think that just makes sense oh, okay then as a like retail investors do you think they'll more focus on STO market rather than nft markets well you know retail investors um they you know people go where the where the light's shining the brightest yeah. right you know where the buzz <laughs> is um, and also the fact that, you know, on the NFTs, you have this super speculative, mm. you know, trading uh, uh, angle to it. You know, the fact that, you know, you could get rich quick, you mm. know, by, by trading NFT. Yeah. So you'll find a lot of people, a lot of retail isn't into NFTs because of art. Yeah. They're into NFTs because, you know, maybe I can, sure. I can make some money off of mm. this thing. So um, it's, uh, it's all, it's just, it's perspectives, right? Mm. Um, that kind of is the way I see it. Okay, cool. Then what advice can you offer to the other companies looking to embark on a similar journey and enter the SDO industry? Ah, lots of advice. <laughs> um, you know, do things by the book. Okay. You know, like if you're trying to get into this space, you're doing that because you want to get, you want to do it the right way. True. Um, you don't want to fall foul of mm. the regulators. Uh, you want to make sure you're in the investors on your, you know, in your products or using your platform are protected. Um, so the advice, the first and foremost mm -hmm. is, you know, abide by those regulations, study them, understand them, invest in having a compliance mm. framework. Um, you know, especially if you're a, a young entrepreneurial, you know, digital native who yeah. kind of wants to transition now, you know, it's a very different space. You will get audited by regulators. You will, you know, you will have uh, have to be uh, compliant in a whole bunch of areas. Whether it's how you sign up, how you accept in, uh, applications yeah. of customers, how you do that KYC, 
or how you process funds. Mm. You know, anti-money laundry is a huge thing nowadays. It is, yeah. Um, or you know how you maintain you know customer privacy and and protect your customers data right so that's that's my number one advice and then i would say you know it, it's kind of step outside of the bubble a little bit mm. right so just because you are inside yeah. digital assets um doesn't mean you know everyone else gets it True. you know this is probably something that we're all guilty of yeah. at some point or the other <laughs> right <laughs> um so you know, kind of make sure you're speaking a language that the average investor can oh. understand. Mm. Um, you know, simplify the technology, simplify the user interfaces, uh, and when you work with an issuer, if you're an exchange or a, or a platform, you know, make sure the issuer understands their p how they can promote their raise, right? Using the right language. You, you know, an issuer cannot say this token is going to the moon. Right. You know, this is no longer yeah. the Wild West of, mm -hmm. of crypto. You know, this is a respectable, you know, security. Mm. Um, and the way I understand Korea's approach to be is that this will be a very highly regulated, yeah. you know, trading uh, mm -hmm. uh, under the watchful eye of, you know, of um, of the regulators. Mm. And, and so it's really important to um, to kind of go through this entire educational program. Uh, and make sure issuers understand it, investors understand it, mm. you know, and kind of make that differentiation between, you know, unregulated crypto versus, True. you know, security token offerings. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights with us today. And My thanks pleasure. for joining us. Hope to see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.